We welcome you all to our morning Bible study on uh, 1 Corinthians. We are studying an exciting chapter in the Bible, the most ex exhaustive chapter on the hope of the resurrection. The basis of a Christian life is resurrection. That's why we believe in Jesus. That's our hope in which we are saved. And this chapter is an extensive study on resurrection. And therefore, it's very, good, very important for us to understand the real hope every one of us has in Christ. We will carry on from verse 49. And uh, just for continuity's sake, I look at the two previous, previous verse. Where it says, as we have the likeness of the earthly man, we have the likeness also of the man from heaven. The earthly man was Adam. Adam also means Adama in Hebrew, which means man or Adam. And Adama is a word for dust, earth, ground. We are all made of dust. In the dust, God breathed the breath of life and we became a living being. So the first man became a living being. From dust, God breathed a life and man became a living being. He is from the dust of the earth. And uh, the man from heaven is Christ. We spoke about last session on the divinity of Christ and the humanity of Christ. Son of God, son of man. We looked at very much as I gave you references where it talks about his divinity, how he's God himself, and also he had a body prepared for him to come and live. That's why when he entered the world, he told the Father in heaven, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5, sacrifices and burnt offerings didn't desire, but a body you have prepared for me. Here I am, I come to do your will. And Hebrews 10, 10 says, by that will, we made holy to sacrifice the body of Christ once and for all. So the man from heaven, whose spirit, God, spirit, Emmanuel, God with us, came and dwelt in a body of flesh and blood. He was crucified on the cross as a payment for the sins of the whole world. So let's go on from verse 49. I'll read verse 48 and go on to verse 49. 48 verse, as was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. Earthly man sin, we sin. We are like him. And as the man from heaven, that is Christ, so also are those who are of heaven. So we are going to become more and more like Jesus while living in this world. And one day we will be made like him. When we leave this world, we go to heaven, we will be like him. Verse 49. Uh, just as we have borne the likeness of the earthly man, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. That is Jesus. For the sake of continuity, those who are not here last session, I want to, us to read uh, two verses, two passages. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, 2021. Shani will read for us. Philippians chapter 3, 2021. And also 1 John chapter 3, Verses 1 to 4, 1 to, 1 to 3. First John, letter of John, chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 3. These two passages talk about how they're going to be like Jesus after he comes the second time. Philippians chapter 3, verses 20, 21. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. We're going to have a glorious body like Jesus. Also, let's read 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. 1 John 3, 1 to 3. Beloved, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it is not yet revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. The other day someone asked a question, how will we look once we, Jesus comes again? We're going to be like Jesus, how will we be? But here it says very clearly, no one knows how we're going to be. But we should be like him. That's enough for us. Enough for us to know we're going to be like Jesus. Another question that came was, how will this spiritual body be 
What are, in fact, they wanted to know what kind of material it will be. It is spiritual, it is not physical. And next verse explains that. Verse 50 explains, I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor do the perishable inherit the imperishable. This body is perishable. It is a body of, it's a body of flesh and blood. And once the spirit leaves the body, the uh, flesh goes to dust or ashes or water, depending on where you die. So, spirit living in the body means life. At the other day, we discussed about how the breath of life is also the spirit of man. Isaiah 57 verse 16. It's also the uh, breath of life is, is the spirit of man. It's also the heart of man. Psalm 51 verse 17. Also the inner man. Proverbs 20, 27. When you put these three verses together, uh, four verses together, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, when man was created, Isaiah 57, verse 16, Psalm 51, verse 17, and Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, we realized that the breath of life, the spirit of man, the heart of man, and the inner man are all the same entity. So spirit living in the body is life for the body. A living being, man became a living being. Spirit leaving the body is death, physical death. In the book of James, chapter 2, verse 26, we read, As the body without the spirit is dead, faith without deeds is death. Spirit in the body means life. Spirit leaving the body means death. And once the spirit leaves the body, this body of flesh and blood goes back to dust from where it came. That's what Job says, I came from dust, I'll go back to dust. And we know the chemicals in the body are the same chemicals which are in the ground, in the earth. Basic chemicals are sodium, potassium, calcium, iron and phosphorus. Same things there in the dust. So this flesh and blood will not inherit the God's kingdom. The new heaven, New Jerusalem, there is no body of flesh and blood. He said, I declare to you, flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God, nor the perishable. Perishable is a body, human body, perishable, will not inherit the imperishable. Now, the spiritual body, there's some glimpse of the spiritual body described in the Bible. How after Christ rose from the dead, with the body, he could go through closed doors. Flesh and blood cannot go through a locked door, isn't it? But Jesus went through locked doors. And also, that body had the marks, the nail marks. And also, where the sword went on the side, there was a mark. On the first day after he rose from the dead, even he appeared to the disciples. They were all scared of the Jews. So they locked the door and sat inside the house. And Christ entered through the locked door and appeared to them. Thomas was not there. He said, unless I see plain marks hands, I will not believe. And the following week, again Jesus appeared. Again they behind locked doors. If a door is locked, you and me cannot enter it with the flesh and blood body. The spiritual body, we can enter through it. But the spiritual body also had marks. What happens? He appears to Thomas. Come, come, come. You want to see, no? Put your finger here where the nails were. Put your hand on the side. And let's read that passage for clarity. John chapter 20, verses 19 to 26. Chapter 29, 19 to 29. John chapter 20. Read, listen very carefully as Shiny reads it. Then the same day at evening, beginning the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, called the twin, 
one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my, si look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Praise God. Again, again, the Lord tells them, Peace be to you, peace be to you. They were all scared. They're scared of the Jews. And yet, Lord appeared to, to them and went through locked doors. So this spiritual body can enter through locked doors. And yet, the spiritual body had marks. So we can understand from there some glimpse about the spiritual body we're going to have the body that Jesus had. Also, the Bible says in Mark 16, 12, after the rose from there, he appeared in a different form to the disciples, different form. What the form is, we don't know. But just be consoled and encouraged in the fact that they're going to have a body, a spiritual body, like the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is imperishable, imperishable. It will not perish. It will be for, for eternity, immortal body. Immortal body. In fact, 2 Timothy chapter 1, 9 10 says, This grace was given us before the beginning of time, but now revealed the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Immortality to the light through the gospel. Everlasting life begins at the point of time we accept Christ as Savior and Lord. At that time, we enter into God's kingdom. We enjoy God's kingdom. We have relationship with God, one with God, peace with God, and it continues. Whether we live or die, it continues. As uh, Romans 14, 8, Paul writes, if we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. The live or die, we belong to the Lord. So everlasting life begins here, and one day there's going to be a physical kingdom we're going to enjoy. Book of Revelation 21st and 22nd chapter with a new body, spiritual body in heaven, and it will not be a physical body, flesh and blood will not inherit it, it will be a different body, but we will have a likeness. The marks of Jesus were there on the body, spiritual body. So let's praise God that we are going to be like him. Let's go on. Verse 51. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. The well, trumpet will sound, dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. Dead will be raised imperishable, we will be changed. What Paul is saying here is, all those who have gone to be with the Lord in spirit before that, body is perishing, is decaying, or has decayed, they will be raised to life. And we will be changed. Paul really thought that he's going to be alive when Christ comes second time. This we will be changed refers to the rapture. We'll all, all not die. Paul really believed that during his lifetime, Christ is going to come. That was his desire and will, uh, wish. And when he comes, if he happen to be alive, he said, we'll all, all not die. We'll be changed. We'll be raptured at the last trumpet. Read the book of Revelation, the first few chapters, it talks about how uh, the Lamb of God took a scroll from the hand of the one sitting on the, ancient, uh, on the throne, full of judgment, and seals were opened. Seals. Seven seals were opened. When the seven seals were opened, then angels began to sound trumpets. Trumpets were sounded. Seven trumpets. Seven seals. The seven seal. Seven trumpets were sounded. The last trumpet is seventh trumpet. 
at the last trumpet after that those who happened to be alive at that time who believe in jesus would not die they will be changed raptured and go to heaven without tasting death in john 11 25 to 26 he says i am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me will live even though he dies in other words if he died before he comes the second time we will live raised to life to be with him forever and then he goes on to say and those who live and believe in him will never die meaning those who happen to be alive when he comes and believe in him they will not die they'll be changed they were raptured they join the lord in the, in the clouds when he comes a second time that's what this is about the rapture one more passage about rapture is found in first thessalonians chapter 4 13 to 18 if any read there also first thessalonians chapter 4 13 to 18 But I do not want you to be ignorant brethren concerning those who have fallen asleep lest you sorrow as others who have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so God will bring him with him those who sleep in Jesus for this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep for the lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of god and the dead in christ will rise first then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and thus we will also be with him therefore comfort one another with these words again this passage refers to the uh, the rapture 17th verse the court of the lord in the air and that will happen after the dead are raised now the death rising resurrection there are two resurrection two resurrections first resurrection before the thousand years second resurrection after thousand years now we read also revelation chapter 20 verses 4 and 5 please any revelation yeah. chapter 20 verse 4 and 5 and i saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them then i saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to jesus and for the word of god who had not worshiped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands and they lived and reigned with christ for a thousand years but the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished this is a first resurrection Should I continue? Oh, yeah. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with Him a thousand years. Yeah. No, and the two resurrections. First is for those who are beheaded for Christ, and the rest of the dead will come to life after thousand years. Those who normally die in the Lord, the body. I'm talking about body. Spirit goes to these immediately when they leave this world. Body will rise to life after thousand years. So two resurrections. What is the second death? Second death is no power of them. Second death is people being thrown into the lake of burning sulfur. That's the second death. Revelation chapter twenty, thirteen to fifteen. But the point is this: we talk about rapture. It will happen at the last trumpet. The seventh trumpet sounded, then will be rapture. So the apostle Paul really believed he's going to be alive when Christ comes, but that didn't happen. He's going to be with the Lord. and one day when he comes second time we will know we will be raptured if he happened to be alive so already left this world our spirit has gone to heaven body here in this world when he comes a second time our spirit will come with him he'll come on the mount of olives on the olives will divide into two there'll be an earthquake i think i suppose it'll be it'll break into two and uh, from there he enter the temple Where the Antichrist will be occupying the temple in Jerusalem, is yet to be built now, actually, and then he'll destroy the Antichrist or the man of lawlessness with the breath of his mouth. This is found in Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse four onwards. 
But we are here talking about rapture. So most likely it will not happen in our lifetime. At least not in my lifetime, the rapture. The many things yet to take place before second coming of Christ. A lot of things yet to take place. Not yet happen. And uh, after that happens only. And all these wars, rumors about the world, beginnings of the both banks. It's not going to come when everything is fine. It's uh, uh, not going to come when things are going very bad. There are beginnings. It'll come when everything is fine. People say peace and safety, everything is fine, all the wars have gone. That's the time it's going to come. It doesn't matter. We are called to live for him now. We have to focus on doing his will till he comes a second time. So don't worry about flesh and blood body. We'll have body like Jesus. And if you happen to be alive when he comes, we will not die. We'll be changed in a flash, in a twinkling of the eye at the last trumpet. Even the first temple has not sounded yet. Even the first seal is not opened yet. So let's not focus on when it's going to come. No one knows when it's going to come. That's why even the Apostle Paul, he thought he's going to be alive when Christ comes second time. He didn't know also. Nobody knows. Book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 36 says, No one knows the last day. Not even the angels, not even the Son of Man. No one knows. Only the Father in heaven knows. So don't worry about trying to speculate about second coming. Second coming of Christ for us means two things. Number one, be busy sharing the gospel. 24 chapter Matthew was 14. And also be busy as a church living a life of holiness. Second Peter, third chapter, 8 to 12. Shani could read both these passages. They're the very important for us to know because this is what we should be doing till he comes second time. We're waiting for him to come. We want him to come, no doubt. What do we do till then? First 24 chapter Matthew verse 40 and then read our next passage. Matthew 24 verse 14 And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. And second Peter 8 to maybe till verse 14 you can 8 to 14. Uh, that's 2 Peter chapter 3, no? verse yeah. 8 to 14. Yes. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand days, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for the new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. We have to hasten his coming. How do we hasten his coming? How do we make him come as quickly as possible? Living a holy life as a church and be active in sharing our faith. Instead of speculating about second coming, about rapture. See, many people ask me this question about but when will the rapture happen? Will happen in my time? The real underlying reason for asking that question is they don't want to face death. Oh, I don't want to die. I wish I would. Yes, very convenient with rapture. Not to experience death. So basically it is a motive of, you know, I don't want to go through death. I want to be raptured. I want all this suffering and death and all that. But then the point is our calling is to share the gospel, live a holy life. Don't worry about dying. And whether I'll die or whether I'll be raptured. I don't want to die. I want to be raptured. When is the rapture going to take place? That's not our concern. Our concern it should be doing his will, living for him, sharing gospel, living a holy life, blessing people. And that's why Paul writes, Philippians 121, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. To live is Christ and to die is gain. So when you die, we go, uh, as the world says, we die. We go to heaven and it's precious to God. Our spirits go immediately to Jesus. 
Psalm 116 verse 15 says, Precious in the sight of God are the death of his saints. So our death is precious to God, so don't fear death. In fact, when he entered the world, he came to destroy the one, the one who was a part of death and free all those people who has a slavery by their fear of death. Again, can you read that passage, uh, Shani? Hebrews chapter 2, 14, 15. Hebrews 2, 14, 15, please. Hebrews 2, 14, 15. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Yeah. So delivered up from fear of death long time ago on the cross. And therefore, don't worry about rapture. Don't worry about whether you die or going to be raptured. Simply live for Jesus. Leave, it, leave the rest to him. We are called to fulfill God's purpose for our generation. In the book of Acts 13, chapter 36, it's written about David. Acts 13, 36. For with David have served God's purpose for his generation, he fell asleep. He buried the forefathers and his body decayed. Same way, we are called to fulfill God's purpose for our generation. And if it doesn't come in our lifetime, we will gather to our forefathers, to uh, uh, all the, uh, in, uh, the spirits of righteous men made perfect. And body will go to dust or ashes or water, it will decay. But praise God, David, as David said, Psalm 16, verse 10 to God. You will not abandon me to the grave. No, let the Holy One see decay. Holy One is Jesus. He will not see decay. So I will not abandon me. I'll go to the grave, but he won't abandon me. So don't worry about rapture. Thank God that even though we go to the grave, he won't abandon, abandon us to the grave. We'll be raised to life one day. In the meantime, our spirits will go to Jesus. We'll have fellowship with him. And very, very precious in the sight of God. So our calling here is to live a life that pleases God. And one day we might get a rich inheritance into God's, welcome into God's kingdom. In closing, let's look one more passage. The next two verses are very, very powerful verses. So I'm going to go slowly. As you notice, we just covered two or three verses. Next one is going to be very important. Finally, we'll talk about our responsibility in terms of this amazing thing. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 5 to 11. Sorry, 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses uh, 5 to 11. But also for this reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. There was 11, please. Oh, for he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That verse 11th verse says in my Bible, you receive a rich welcome into God's kingdom. Rich welcome, inheritance. We look forward to that. So according to uh, the, this passage, we add to our faith all these qualities. Don't be complacent. Don't be self-satisfied. Thank God there's so much more in Him. And as we look to Him, we'll realize that uh, the Third and fourth verse says, same passage, uh, same uh, chapter, third and fourth verse. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he's given us very great and precious promises. That through them, that be the promise of God, we can participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption of the world, corruption of the world caused by evil desires. So it's wonderful to know that our future is you know, even more exciting for us as we seek to grow in his knowledge. 
and one day we'll receive a rich welcome into the inner, great kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we've got to look at the next few verses on Monday and uh, it's going to be very exciting. And then last verse talks about our responsibility to give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord. The labor on the Lord is never in vain. That's a conclusion for the whole chapter. God bless you all.